How's it going everyone? It's Alex. And there are many different displays on the market right now for whether you wanna do movie watching or gaming or PC gaming. There's a lot of options out there right now. And LG's lineup has been quite unique in the fact that they're offering features that you don't necessarily see on every other TV. When it comes to G-Sync compatibility, HDMI 2.1, you get the high refresh rate with the OLED tech, mixed it. And they've been making a lot of noise recently. So I did review this TV about five or six months ago and I actually really liked it. I was using it primarily as a gaming monitor, not necessarily as a average use case scenario where you'd be watching television, movies, and the occasional console gaming. Of course, I am doing all of that, but I have been hitting this TV with some pretty intense stuff when it comes to PC gaming. Windows has a ton of static elements littered everywhere, and that's probably one of the quickest ways to burn it in. Today, I wanted to talk about the entire experience I've had using this TV for the past, you know, some time. Now, as a fan of OLED technology overall, I do wanna address First off, some of the not so much issues, but concerns a lot of people have when they're looking into an OLED display. So obviously the largest concern with these OLED panels has been burn-in potential, meaning the organic subpixels will slowly dim over time. Obviously this process does get accelerated depending on the brightness level you have your TV set to. So if you have this thing cranked out at 100% brightness all the time, you are ultimately going to wear out the display quicker than setting it to a lower brightness. OLED already has a reputation for not being the brightest displays when compared to their LCD counterparts. And keep in mind, my use case scenario has primarily been gaming. I've definitely watched movies and thrown up a ton of YouTube videos on this display. But overall, main use case scenario is productivity related programs like using Blender, DaVinci Resolve, and overall the Windows operating system, which as you know, has many static UI elements littered throughout the operating system, meaning static taskbars and a lot of static elements littered everywhere. You can remedy this issue and try to save yourself from burn-in potential if you do hide the taskbars, have screen savers set. There's a lot of things you can do and there's a ton of guides on YouTube that you can explore into this. I have done it for the most part, but I do crank up the display pretty high. I mean, I probably set it to 80 to 100% brightness about 100% of the time. Any effort to minimize static images on this display are a good idea. I definitely recommend doing that if you're interested in a display like this. That being said though, LG also has a dedicated suite of burn-in protection features built into this TV, and there's a whole settings option actually on the TV. So daily driving this display as a computer monitor. Some people had no issues whatsoever, like myself, and then other people did in fact have burn-in. Keep in mind, this is specifically covering this type of extreme usage and not what would be considered normal operating parameters like console gaming, TV watching, movies, that type of stuff. If you are looking at the possibility of using this monitor and that is a concerning possibility that has been lingering on your mind, either get a warranty that covers burn-in with a display or look at something else. At this point, it is difficult to even really be considered an early adopter of OLED in 2022. This tech has been around for quite a while now, but this TV specifically isn't really clearly designed to be optimized as a computer monitor. Window scaling can be completely whack sometimes, which isn't really the display's fault, but just another hoop you have to jump through. The lack of an auto wake feature requires you to physically turn on the display when you boot up your computer, and the whole ABSL protection feature likes to dim the display to protect the pixels, which is relatively annoying, which means sometimes you have a fluctuation in brightness when you're browsing web pages, whether it's dark or bright, you'll see the pixels auto adjust in brightness. You can go into the service menu and turn this feature off, but unfortunately you're gonna void your warranty and get into some other issues. If you wanna do that, you can. I kept it on and have been dealing with it. All right, so the positives. I know this has sounded like an OLED rant for the past couple minutes, but I really like this display. And let's talk about the positives, which there are a lot of. I still think this is easily one of the most unique displays out there right now. The price has also dropped since release, but it still remains at around the $1,100 mark. OLED's unbeatable pixel response, inky black levels, makes this one of the most responsive and immersive displays you can game on. Even with a lack of curve, sitting at a distance where it's comfortable to view or even off to the side a bit, viewing angles are really good. So thumbs up for that. In the last video, 
I try to use this as a main monitor, sitting right up close to it, meaning putting my keyboard right here, my mouse right here. I don't think a setup like this really works unless you have a desk depth that's really deep. They would fit like something like a standard Ikea desk. It doesn't really work that well. So I would say you either have to have this mounted on a wall or sit your desk back a couple feet where it's actually comfortable to use. The overall display, it is glossy, which looks crystal clear and beautiful. The room in general that I use it in is pretty dim for the most part when I have the shade closed. When I have it open, you can still definitely do it, but you can run into some issues if you have this in a super bright living room where you definitely wanna have a brighter display. But I think this is adequate enough for most rooms. Okay, so the picture quality still looks incredible. The infinite contrast, SDR, HDR, Dolby Vision content, it really brings out the best in content. The sharpness of the display results in crispy, clear images that are really hard to give up once you jump over to another display technology. And when you start gaming on this display, you'll soon realize that it is pretty great. You can tell that LG has actually invested time into making this an optimized gaming display. For next generation consoles like the Series X, PlayStation 5, the dedicated variable refresh rate, and the dedicated gaming panel that helps you adjust things right on the fly without having to jump through 10 different menus like some other TVs is awesome. It basically checks all the boxes. You have 4K, variable refresh rate, HDMI 2.1, G-Sync, full support for the PlayStation 5 and Series X. And if there are bugs, which occasionally there have been bugs for let's say the PlayStation 5, when it comes to some video settings, usually LG is pretty quick to address any of these issues. So just another thumbs up when it comes to gaming. HDR gaming also looks incredible. You know, I'd honestly go as far as saying that most people literally won't be able to tell the difference between this display and a dedicated gaming display. It's that fast for even competitive gaming. I won't say that you know, you're not gonna be beating some crazy competitive gaming monitor, but most people won't be able to tell the difference. It's really that fast and 120 Hertz is really nice. All right, so you've got a package here that has its downsides for the niche, and I mean niche group of people that are using this as a PC monitor that even have a computer and graphics card powerful enough to play games on a display like this. There's downsides, there's upsides. For me, I still use my ultra-wide monitors every single day without a problem. I love them, but I appreciate the technology that OLED brings to the table and its advantages. But if you're in the primary group of users that wants the do-it-all for movies, TV shows, next-gen gaming, the negatives just don't outweigh the overwhelming amount of positives this display offers for me to say it's not worth it. Of course, ultimately, the decision is yours to make. If you absolutely cannot stand OLED and you believe that your display is going to burn in with your use case scenario, look at something else and look at an alternative. There are really good displays out there. But if you're looking for a sweet screen and don't mind some of the downsides of OLED, I'd say definitely take a look at it. I think it's a pretty sweet screen. And if you're in the market for the possibility of using this as a gaming display, they are making a smaller 42 inch panel that is going to be interesting for PC users. All that said, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know if you guys wanna see anything else in the comments down below or if you have any questions or things you'd like to add. Thank you so much. Catch you guys in the next one.